Great. What's wrong, Olive? Didn't you hear? Our fearless leader's asking us all to watch a hand hygiene video again. Oh yeah, another quality project, eh? Yeah, she says it's another brilliant idea from the network. Oh, I work with the network all the time at my old clinic. They're great. They always help me with my challenging situation and help me to meet my reporting deadlines. I guess. Quality projects just seem like a lot of extra work to me. Not really. Maybe there's a little extra effort required, but those projects really do help to improve health outcomes and patient satisfaction. All right, Jada. So who is this network and what gives them the right to even ask us to be in a project? I mean, just what does the network do? So glad you asked, Olive. Who was that? Me, the announcer guy. The what? Oh, no. What? We've gotten stuck in a training video? I hate when that happens. That's right, Jada. And you know what that means. It's time to find out what the network does. Yay! The network is a government contracted organization that helps ensure quality care for dialysis patients. Our network, Network 15, helps dialysis and transplant programs in Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, and Wyoming. An area with about 360 clinics and more than 20,000 people on dialysis. The quickest way to get through this olive is just to go along with it. That's great and all, but what does the network actually do? Jada, I'm so glad you asked. The network operates on behalf of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. You probably know them as CMS. The networks are contracted to promote priorities and goals that are established by CMS in a new statement of work every year. Through the statement of work, CMS tells the network exactly what their responsibilities are and what quality improvement activities need to be conducted, with whom, when, and what outcomes are expected. CMS also expects the network to help facilities and patients with complaints and grievances. The networks also work behind the scenes to ensure patients have access to care and to prevent or avert involuntary discharges. Wow, that seems like a lot of stuff, announcer guy. So where do all these QIAs come from and why are they important? And what about the complaint stuff and access to care? Great questions, Olive. Let's take them one at a time. First, the QIAs. Remember the SOW? The SOW requires the networks to create and conduct specific quality improvement projects every year that are based on healthcare trends and needs, like reducing bloodstream infections and increasing the number of patients dialyzing at home. Network staff work to tailor the activities as much to the needs of individual clinics as they can, but because of CMS mandates, all identified clinics are required to participate in these QIAs. Participation in the QIAs is an opportunity for collaboration, learning, and quality improvement, not a punishment. The network helps facilities achieve their goals, not arbitrarily dictate rules and regulations. The QIAs allow the network to collaborate with clinics to help address quality issues that align with the specific needs of their patients. Reviews of facility data help the network decide which clinics will benefit most from participating in a particular QIA. Hey, announcer guy, can you tell us some of what's involved in being a QIA facility? Sure, Jada. QIA facility activities can include distributing education handouts to facility staff and or patients, attending educational webinars, reviewing articles, watching videos, and of course, evaluating and reporting progress. This may mean you have to complete a worksheet, talk to patients and or other staff, report findings in monthly quality meetings, and complete an assessment. CMS, and therefore the network, does expect full participation from all of the facilities within their service area. What do you mean, service area? Yeah, I wondered about that too. Your ESRD network is one of 18 across the country. It represents all the dialysis clinics and transplant centers in your specified area. Thanks for the geography lesson. <laughs> But what do these networks actually do? You know, Olive, you have a lot of great questions, many of the same ones I had when I was working on my first facility project. <laughs> hey, Mr. Announcer Guy, will you tell us more about what the networks do? 
I sure will, ladies. In addition to QIA oversight, the networks do everything they can to ensure patients have a voice in their own care. For instance, they work with clinics to improve quality outcomes and encourage patient and family involvement. That sounds okay, I guess. But what can these networks do for us? I'll take this one, Mr. Announcer Guy. Once when I have one of those patients, you know, the ones you go home at night and you still think about, I was really confused and I felt like I had run out of options. So I called the network to ask for advice. You weren't afraid they'd come breaking down the doors and maybe shut you down? That's not really how the network works, Olive. For one thing, the network employs specially trained and experienced individuals who field calls from patients and clinics with questions and concerns. Network staff review the information from these phone calls and investigate how best to help the individual callers resolve their issues. That's what they did for me. I had a challenging patient who I just couldn't connect with. I was banging my head against the wall. The network listened and talked it out with me. They suggested interventions I hadn't even considered before. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Not only was the experience not bad, it was great. They were really helpful. May I chime in again? Why not, Mr. Announcer Guy? Thank you, Jada. Did you know that networks also partner with groups to advocate for the ESRD population? Groups like the National Kidney Foundation, the Quality Innovation Network Quality Improvement Organizations, other ESRD clinics and networks, state survey agencies, and local hospitals, nursing homes, and community organizations. Yay, state agencies. Doesn't that just make networks part of the dialysis police? Not in my experience, Olive. Everyone thinks the networks just want to regulate and cite clinics. What they really want to do is work with the clinics to help them navigate murky waters and create individualized solutions to unique patient challenges to help people have the best care they can. In all my work with them, they seem to genuinely want to empower patients and clinic staff to work together, help foster local flexibility, and promote innovative approaches to dialysis care. They want to help in creating sustainable processes that will promote continuity. That's a lot of big words, Jada, but what do they mean? They mean that the networks try to use local solutions to address local problems. Huh? The networks work with the staff and stakeholders who are local to the clinics, allowing for individualized solutions. They bring together and work with medical review boards, patients and renal professionals from throughout the network who identify best practices, network councils made up of renal professionals throughout the region who focus on educational outreach materials, patient advisory council, groups made up of patients only who work on patient-led quality projects ensuring patients have a voice in their care and educational materials they receive. And yes, working with state survey agencies to make sure that every patient receives the safest and best quality care with access to treatment. Not only does that not sound scary, it sounds really great. You're right, Olive. The network isn't scary at all. And you can be part of this once you settle in. Every year, the network recruits new members for its boards and committees. The network is there for anyone who has a concern or question. You just have to make the call. Not only that, anytime our service area has an emergency, for example, a wildfire or severe storm, the network is there to assist dialysis facilities and patients to coordinate what comes next. This means that patients can hopefully avoid mistreatments. That's right, Jada. While the network advocates for patients, they also help clinics deal with their concerns. The network does whatever they can to ensure the patients get the best care possible. So I really feel comfortable reaching out to the network, you know, with questions, concerns, and best practice ideas. It's only collaboration if we actually work together. The open door has to swing both ways. 
and good, clear, two-way communication makes it happen. So Olive, do you feel any differently about your hand hygiene activity now? Well, Jada, now that I know what it's for, I feel better. I know it's for the patients, and that's worth a little extra time, because if it helps them, we all succeed. Yeah, and trust me, when you have a problem, you'll be glad the network is there to help. Thanks, Jada, and thanks, Mr. Announcer Guy. Your explanations really helped.